Hello and welcome to this Filbert Flies review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at two products from Wingflex, the A320 FC U-Cube and the A320 MCDU. Wingflex sent me both of these products free of charge in return for a review video, but much like with my scenery reviews of old, I'm going to be telling you my honest opinion throughout this video. Doesn't matter whether it's a $15 airport add-on or $698 worth, hang on, yeah, $698 worth of hardware, I'm going to tell you what I really think. So we're going to start off by talking a little bit about compatibility. Then we're going to see what's inside both of the boxes. And then we're going to move over to the PC and look at setting up the hardware and seeing how well it works with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I did a whole piece of film about compatibility, which has been rendered obsolete overnight uh, because Wingflex have added a number of Airbus aircraft to their MCDU compatibility list. So rather than making the same mistake again and telling you exactly which aircraft uh, each of these products works with, I'm gonna post a current list of compatible aircraft in the video description, and I would urge you to check out Wingflex's website to see the most up-to-date list. That said, I think it's time to start opening some boxes and seeing what's inside, starting with the FCU cube. So we have a quick installation guide which tells you how to install the stand, a piece of foam, a white box containing some screws, the two pieces of the stand, a screwdriver and a USB-C cable, and of course the device itself. Inside the MCDU box, actually before we do that, if you wouldn't mind subscribing and giving the video a like, I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, back to it, inside the MCDU box we have a piece of foam, we have a nice looking bag which contains the stand. We have, of course, the MCDU itself, which is a beautiful looking thing. And we have a bag of screws and a USB-C cable. Fixing the stand to the FCU cube was very straightforward indeed, even without looking at the included instructions. The MCDU doesn't come with any instructions about how to attach it to the stand. Now, I think, to be honest, it's simply supposed to rest on top of it, and it does that very comfortably and very snugly, as you can see. It does come with four screws and four washers. The screws go through these holes here, but there's no nut and there's nothing on the stand for them to attach to. So I can only assume that these are perhaps for home cockpit builders or other people who want to attach it to something other than the included stand. There's also this piece on the back with these two screws, which looks like you're supposed to slot it underneath something and uh, tighten the screws up. But it's a bit of a mystery to me. Hopefully those of you with home cockpits or an interest in building them or other mounting ideas for this device will be able to make more sense of all of this than I am. On the subject of the stand, I think it's a really clever bit of design. You can adjust the width from narrow to wide and you can also adjust the viewing angle using these little pins which sit in the holes on the bottom piece. Both products appear to be pretty well made. They're made of a mixture of metal and plastic, uh, but most of the plastic feels very nice to the touch and certainly anything but cheap. The buttons have a nice feel, they're resistant and they have a good click to them. I don't know how they compare to a real world MCDU unfortunately, uh, but they feel good. The only bit of plastic that I think feels a little bit cheap uh, are the knobs on here. Now, the push and the pull and the twisting action feels right, but the actual plastic feels a little bit less than premium, particularly when compared with the MCDU. Right, so things are about to start getting quite exciting now. As you'll see, I found a little bit of space for the FCU cube and the MCDU on my Bijou flight simming desk. Uh, I've plugged both of them in, and I'm going to show you how to install the WingsBridge software and get them going. Now, you'll notice when you first plug them in that nothing happens. There are no lights or anything, but there's absolutely nothing to worry about. All will become clear once we start the software. So WingsBridge can be downloaded from the wingflexsim.com website. Uh, it's not immediately apparent where you go for it, but uh, it's under support, bridge software, and you click the link here to download it. While you're on this page, you will want to make note of how to upgrade the device firmware. It's not immediately apparent when you start WingsBridge how you do it, but uh, the instructions are all here. So this is what WingsBridge looks like. You've got four uh, tabs down the side here. On the equipment tab, you will see both of the devices have been detected. 
we can click on one of them and you'll notice that it comes to life. Um, you can test the input of the knobs uh, and the buttons so you can push and pull and just make sure that they're all working here. All of mine are. The screen and backlight sliders don't currently uh, work. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's something that will come later on or what. If we go back to equipment, we can do exactly the same thing with our MCDU and you'll see that there are more and more lights that come to life. Now, if we scroll the uh, screen up, you'll notice that this does actually work. And this is our first look at, uh, at the screen. But we'll come back to that. The keys as well, you can adjust the backlighting there. The firmware upgrade tab is empty by default, uh, but as I showed you on that web page, there are instructions for how you upgrade your firmware. I've done firmware upgrades for both of these devices and it was relatively straightforward. Basically, you unplug them, hold a button, plug them back in again, and then the firmware upgrade pops up on this screen here. Under setup, it implies that uh, the paths to your SIMs should be automatically detected. Mine weren't, so I just click the repair buttons here and here for the two sims that I own. The moment of truth has arrived. It's time to find out if these things are actually work and what they're like to use. So I've spawned into a TAP A320, a Phoenix A320 at uh, Lisbon, and we're just going to have a little play around and see how we go, starting with the FCU cube. So that appears to be working beautifully. Speed is changing down here on the hardware, and it's changing up here in the sim. Same with the heading, same with the altitude, which is currently set to 100 foot increments. Let's see about changing that to a thousand foot. And lo and behold, it's going up in thousands of feet. That is fantastic. Should also be able to, yeah, we can also set a vertical speed on the ground, which is good to see. And if we push this in, no, we haven't set up for the flight, so we can't yet uh, cancel off that Yes, But so far, I'm very, very impressed. Let's try the buttons out. So AP1 works, AP2 works. I don't think we'll be able to engage the auto throttle on the ground. No, we can't, but you can see the button moving, definitely working. Same with the loke and the expedite and the approach buttons. They're all working beautifully as are the little knobs underneath which adjust the brightness of the backlighting and the FCU displays both in the sim and on the hardware unit. Here we are, a new view for you, the uh, two MCDUs side by side on your screen. And I've planned a flight in sim brief, so let's just see about setting it up. That is quite incredible. That is very, very cool, I have to say. That feels really, really nice to use, really nice to use. And as you can see, it's a pretty perfect, uh, pretty perfect replica of, uh, of what Phoenix have put together. In fact, if anything, I think the font looks slightly more real in the, uh, in the hardware one. Right, so back to the menu page, FMGC, init. I have got an out-of-date AIRAC database. I haven't flown the Phoenix for a while. Uh, init request. That is remarkable. That is absolutely remarkable. I can't remember what my flight number is. Um, let's just call it TP5192. Cost index of 20. Cruising flight level of 360. Now, I'm not going to uh, make you uh, sit there and watch me do an entire flight with this thing. What I'm going to do instead is to spend a bit of time testing these two products out while flying a few of the aircraft they're compatible with in FS 2020 and FS 2024, put a little montage of clips together and talk you through how I found them over a period of time. So I haven't even left Lisbon on my first flight yet and I've just discovered that there is a little switch on the back of the MCDU which changes it between the left and the right MCDU. Now, as you can see on my screen, I have uh, the uh, perf takeoff page on the left MCDU and the uh, load sheet on the right one. Now, if I change this switch here, you will see that it displays what's on the right MCDU and back to the left, which is very cool. 
The more eagle-eyed amongst you might also notice that I've secured my FCU cube to my monitor stand with command strips, which means I no longer have to hold it when I push and pull the knobs, and I've also widened the MCDU stand, which has made it much more stable. So here we go, finally a bit of actual flying. You'll notice that the heading pops up for a moment on rotation, and I've noticed this before in the Phoenix, but I have no idea why it happens. If you do, let me know in the comments. And it felt really, really nice to be engaging the autopilot with a physical button. Here you can see me using the MCDU to input our approach data and also to set up a hold. Here I am in the Headwind A330-900neo. As you can see, the MCDU is working perfectly and the FCU performed flawlessly throughout my flight as well. Using the hardware with my installed A32NX presented a few slight issues. The MCDU worked perfectly, but the FCU cube didn't quite play ball. The brightness knobs underneath it had no effect on the aircraft in the sim. The speed Mac window wouldn't display a Mac number, showing a speed of 000 instead, and the 100 1000 foot increment switch for the altitude didn't work either, although switching it with the mouse in the sim did allow the knob to be used normally. It occurred to me while filming that I was using an experimental build, so I decided to replace it with the latest stable one. As you can see, this resolved all of the issues except the brightness knobs not working. I'm pleased to report that the Phoenix integration in FS2024 is just as impressive as it is in FS2020. Everything just worked. While I was in 2024, I decided to try the Innibuilds A321 out, just as a bit of an experiment. The Innibuilds A310 and A320 are listed as compatible with the FCU cube on Wingflex's website, but the A321 isn't. I'm happy to report that it worked really well. The MCDU, it's worth noting, is not currently compatible with any of Innibuilds aircraft in either sim. I've now spent three days with these two products and they've left me really impressed. The MCDU in particular is an absolute joy to use. It feels like a really premium product and inputting data on its keypad versus clicking with your mouse. It's like night and day in terms of immersion. It really is. The FCU Cube is also a good product. I like it. It doesn't feel quite as premium as the MCDU, but then it is a third of the price. So I think it's, uh, that's fair enough, probably. The only thing that I found to moan about across all the flights I've done and all the testing is the FCU Cube's compatibility with the fly-by-wire. Now, I started off with the experimental build, as I know a lot of you will be using, um, but I think it's probably a little bit unfair to expect full compatibility with that build because it's updated on a regular basis by a number of different contributors. It worked a lot better with the stable build, although I was slightly disappointed that the brightness knobs weren't uh, doing anything. So hopefully that's something that Wingflex can correct 
in due course. But yeah, a very, very minor point, uh, which should do nothing to detract from uh, the, the fact that these are really, really nice products. And if you can afford them, I think you'll be very, very pleased with them. Talking of which, in the uh, video description down below, you will find discount codes for both products. Um, the MCDU is currently in a pre-sale phase and therefore it's already discounted. So that discount code won't work at the time of publishing, but it will work when it goes back up to full price. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon here on Filbert Flies. Bye-bye.